So right okay. now I'm looking at Eric around. Okay. Yeah, you're you're ready. To, you're good to go now, Dan. Oh, I'm good to go. Yeah. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Photoshop Show. In tonight's episode, we are so lucky to have Lori Rubin with us, and Lori is a member of the Google Plus Photos team. She's a product specialist there, but she is really the one that's making it all run, right, Lori? Oh, I don't think so. There's a lot of people behind the scenes, a lot. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, yeah. but we really appreciate you being on that team. Now, you used to work for Nick Software, right? I did. I actually worked for them for eight years, and then um, when our company was acquired by Google, then I moved up here to Mountain View, so that's where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Neat. And do you still work with the Nick Software, Google, what is it called now, Nick Google? <laughs> Uh, the Nick Collection by Google is the official title. So yes, I um, still work with the Nick software, and we have a team here of Nick folks as well, and some engineers. Our engineers are all in Germany too. So um, yeah, it's like the family is still, you know, partially together. But um, I'm also very much involved in the community aspect of Google Plus and uh, responsible for getting some influencers out here, some um, top name photographers doing these talks and women in photography. So they keep me pretty busy. Oh, that sounds really fun. What a great job. It is. Yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> well, that isn't your only thing that you do because I know you're an amazing photographer, aren't you? Oh, you, you can't say that. I will say that. You are okay. an amazing photographer. Do you guys agree? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, on the weekends I do try to get out and photograph. Um, it's my passion. I love to do it. Uh, I have a actually a print up in the Smithsonian right now, which I might share. I'll show you a little bit about that. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, it's well, fun. I'm so glad they opened the Smithsonian again so some people can see. It. I know, really. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Well, are you going to be showing us any of your work tonight? Yes, I have some befores and afters, and then I'd like to actually demonstrate uh, one or two photos using Nick software. Uh, I know that people are interested in seeing what the product can actually do, and I'll talk a little bit about control points. So we'll make it a quick okay. tutorial, and I'll also show people where to find more information. We've got free tu tutorials and where to find us on Google+. Plus. There's a lot of information out there. Oh, perfect. Well, we're looking forward to that. So everybody who's watching now, stick with us. Um, I want to introduce everybody else. We have a little more pre uh, you know, prelude stuff to do, and then we'll be back with Lori to see all of that great stuff that she's got planned for us. So I do want to say hi to everyone else down there, including my co-host, Ron Clifford. Hi, Ron. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> good and to Ron, you tonight. actually arranged this this um, episode, didn't you? Yeah, well, do you know what? Lori and I met in, at the Photoshop World in Vegas, and Karen Hutton was there, and uh, Dave Bell was there. It's this is kind of like a little homecoming. It's just too bad Karen couldn't be here tonight as well. Um, and I, I met Lori, and, and she's just like a kindred spirit, and we immediately found a friendship and uh, we actually got to go shooting together in the desert. We shot in the Valley of Fire. Um, Barry Blanchard was kind enough to drive us out there on the, the day I had to leave. I uh, went out there just for a couple hours and uh, we just had a great time shooting and talking and getting to know each other. So um, I just knew she'd be a great fit for the show and here we are. <laughs> great. I'm so glad you found each other because now I get to meet you to meet Lori too. Yeah. Um, and But Lori, I've seen you before online. Um, on Karen Hutton's show, The Chat, right? That is correct, yes. I've Yes, and I've done webinars too before as well, so, yeah. And do you do your own G Plus Hangout? Uh, yeah, we do. I do Hangouts, and um, yeah, that's what we do now, uh, being at Google Plus. So I've been interviewing a lot of uh, women for Women in Photography lately, and uh, I've been also teaching Nick Software, particularly Landscape and Nature. That's really neat. I love it yeah. that you have the women in photography emphasis because, you know, I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really neat that we're that women are so well represented and so uh, well, su such an integral part of the Google Plus community. You know, I really don't feel um, at all like I've done in some of my other <laughs> professions, you know, where you're always trying to like get the, the, you know, the women are just right up there. So it's cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And Erica, how are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> this is Erica Thornis. Yep, yep. I am based out of San Diego. I'm a photographer. I shoot um, beach and underwater, and I um, just like to have a good time. So. Well, you're being modest because you are a really unbelievable photographer. We were lucky to have Erica on the show before, right, Erica? Yeah, I just did my underwater. You'll have to go back a few episodes, but a pretty good explanation. 
it's a good explanation of how to shoot underwater for under three hundred dollars. Yeah, that was one of my favorite shows. Really do go back and see that, people, because it's a great show, and you'd be amazed at what you can accomplish. It really shows that it's not about equipment. It's about creativity. Yeah. So great. Well, welcome again, Erica. You always have good questions for our guests. Sweet. <laughs> and next to you, we have Dave Bell. Hello, Dave. Good evening. Um, yeah, I'm Dave Bell. Uh, in Napa Valley, uh, my day job is teaching at a college, teaching information systems courses, including things like e-commerce, but I have uh, research interests in photographers' use of social networking, so I spend a lot of time on G+, and uh, get out shooting whenever I can, and uh, it's always great to be here. Neat. Well, now that you know, we all we know who each other are, um, and I hope there are lots more people out there watching as well. We wish we could see you, um, but we can't. But um, if you would like to join in, you can do that by posting comments on the event. You guys didn't open a separate chat room tonight, did you, Dave and Ron? No, it's it's right on the event, right on the event page. Terrific. So go to the event page for this hangout, and then you know write in questions there. And if we can, I assume your question would be for Lori. So if she can, if she has time, she'll be able to answer those for you. Before we get to that, um, usually at the beginning of a show, I show a tutorial, but I don't have one prepared for tonight. But I do have something I want to show you. And this is in the way of a blatant promotion, <laughs> but I also think there's some useful information there. So I'm going to share my screen for just a second. How's that working? Can you see a uh, page from lynda.com now? It's just loading now, yes. yeah. So uh, what, I'm, we're, what I'm looking at now in my web browser is the lynda.com training site. I wanted to show you two things, and one is that I have a new course, and this is it, and I thought it might be of interest to some of our viewers because I know we have lots of Lightroom users out there. Um, I did a course called Enhancing a Black and White Wedding Photo with Lightroom. And what I was trying to do there is you know, walk through what I would do to a color wedding photo and how I might change it to a black and white, the kinds of things that a wedding photographer would emphasize. You know, how do you get all the tones in the dress, for example? And what do you do, you know, um, about bringing out the face but not losing detail in the shadows and all of those sorts of things. So if you're interested in black and white conversions in Lightroom or in wedding photography, I hope you would go to see the course. But actually, I'm just using this as an example of something. Which is, people um, always say to me, gosh, you know, I love the idea of lynda.com, but, no, oh, you know, I know, you know, it costs money. Well, first, it doesn't cost very much money, but even if you didn't want to pay the monthly subscription fee, I wanted to show you that in every course that lynda.com publishes, there are free movies. And if you are looking for those, you don't even have to log in to the lynda.com site. Just go to lynda.com, find the course you want, and so... If you look down here as I go through the table of contents for this latest course that I did, notice that some of these, uh, that's just a little, that you can ignore that at the top. Some of these are blue, and it's kind of hard to see which ones are which. So you have to look closely. Any movie that's blue here is a free movie. So if you wanted to watch a movie about bringing out detail in a wedding dress, you could click on that movie and watch it, just like any subscriber to the entire lynda.com training library. So I want to make sure you know about that. Um, in every course, there's some uh, percentage of free movies. I don't remember the exact number, and I don't want to say that incorrectly. But especially in long courses, you'll find quite a few movies that you can watch for free. Did you guys all know that? I did. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm so happy. And now just emphasize that so everybody will get that opportunity um, to see some of the great stuff on lynda.com. All right. So let me come back. And... Hi. <laughs> Great. So um, does anybody else have anything they want to say, do, things we forgot? Anything to cover before Lori takes the floor? We're good? Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're all just anxious to hear more about Nick and more from Lori. Okay, well, let's go, Lori. I, you know, I, I, have, I have very few people in that list that I get notified whenever they post something. And, you know, Lori is one of those people because of all the just incredible wildlife shots she posts. And so, you know, if you're not following Lori, do it. Um, Thanks, Dave. <laughs> brightens my day every day. Ah, uh, thank you. I try to post in the morning, you know, at least once a day. So 
thank you for that. That's very nice. I'm going to go ahead and screen share here. So let me know when you can see my desktop here. I'm going to go ahead and go into Photoshop. Do you see an elephant right now? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, let me go back. Yes, yeah, we, do. Now we oh, do. There it is. It's maybe just delayed a little bit. Okay, so um, actually, you know, I think what I'm going to do, let's, I'm in Lightroom now. Do you see Gorilla? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is the photo that got me in the Smithsonian. Um, I'll just show you real quick because I use Nick on everything. So this particular image was taken um, at the Safari Park. I go there when I was in San Diego, Erica, by the mm -hmm. way. Um, when I was in San Diego, I'd go there almost every weekend. And this particular day, um, there were a lot of kids. It was kind of bright. And I almost left, but I heard that voice that said, stay. Don't move. Just stay there. And so I had myself positioned where the mother gorilla is actually looking at a picture of her baby. And her baby, Monroe, is sitting right next to her. So um, my, my, one of my best friends, Piper McKay, said, Laura, you got to enter that into the Winland Smith Rice International Awards. And uh, so I got first place for the zoo category for this particular image. And uh, to prove it, so here I am speaking at the Smithsonian. Yay, here's my oh, 15 wow. minutes of fame. And, um, and this is the actual gallery. You can walk into it. And I was just shocked to see it uh, right there. As you walk in, you can see how big it is. There's a woman wow. standing right there. And I went back the next day, and people were actually talking about it, and they thought it was photoshopped in, but I told them it wasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. So well, you too can actually, get in this picture, Is that a I'm picture sorry? of its of itself that it's looking at, or or? Yeah, another? so it's the mother mother gorilla. She's looking at a magazine. They, it was an enrichment day, so the zoo put out some magazines and bags of popcorn. So she picked up a zoo news magazine, and she's looking at a picture of her baby. Her That's baby. baby Monroe, and her baby sitting next to her. So you know, it's just one of those tell, moments. Lori, could you tell? I mean, do you think she was really going? That's my baby, or was it just? You know, I have spent so much time with them that I know she knows. They are so intelligent. Uh, it's kind of eerie, <laughs> but yes, uh, they look at pictures, and um, I'm, I'm pretty sure at least she recognizes it as a gorilla, if not her own. So oh, I like to think she does think that's true. <laughs> So anyway, I will uh, now go on to Photoshop because I just want to show you that uh, with Nick, anything's possible, right? <laughs> so this particular, I'm going to show you a few befores and after images, and then I'll actually work through an image or two to show you how I enhance images. I am a um, really a wildlife uh, photographer. I like to do some landscapes, but my forte is animals. Um, this is just an example of a shot that I took years ago and I didn't know much about composition or what makes a good picture and one of my mentors who I worked for, Tony Corbell, who some of you probably know, suggested that I crop in and uh, so I did and if you crop in tight, now there's a, there's a little baby there. Um, do you see him? Yeah. So this is just, you know, getting that intimate moment. I'm all about moments and behavior and capturing those you know moments. So this was uh, after using a Monday morning filter within ColorFX Pro 4. Kind of softens it up a bit um, and kind of adds to that mood of this cute little creature. So I love being able to uh, manipulate to what I thought and what I saw at that moment. So that's one image. Uh, here's another one. I call this a long way to grow. This is the before. I'm showing you all my bad stuff <laughs> in the before image. Again taken a while ago. You've got a lot of distractions happening, but I love little flamingos. Look at the differences between the baby and the adult. Uh -huh. So I took this one into Nick, and uh, using the midnight filter, I was able to direct the light, kind of clean it up a bit, and now it's really your eye focuses on that little guy and the dramatic difference between this tall adult and the little little flamingo chick. Could so, you do that again? I want to see again the before. Yes. Now. Let's see here. So this is the before, and now... That's after. So I cropped in a little bit, cleaned up some of the extra stuff around the outside, and then just really directed the light. There's a midnight filter that's pretty dark and moody. And what you can do is use the Photoshop brush fe feature to just get rid of the areas that you don't want. So here I'm directing the light from the mother to the baby. So you can direct light, which is really nice. I'm going to show you an after instead, and then I'll show you before. How's that? We'll change yeah. up a bit. So here's an after image. Um, this is actually shot years ago once again. Uh, no reflectors, no lights, but I was able to take this before image. See how flat it is? Uh, there's no dimension whatsoever, and I took it into a pro contrast filter within 
Nick in color effects and it just kind of popped it up a bit. I almost threw this away and it ended up getting an honorable mention at a fair once. So <laughs> don't ever throw away your images. You never know. And it's fun I to go back. Like, yes, I'm sorry. It, it looks like the original is a JPEG, right? Um, no, you know, these are JPEGs just for screen. Oh, okay. And yeah, so that's just for screen capture here. Yeah, that is a good point. I have been doing that a little bit recently going back realizing some of those old photos that I didn't know what to do with way back when it's like oh you know now I have some tools and, and a little more knowledge that I can I can make something something neat out of that um, Dave that is so true and I enjoy doing that too because there are some great images that we've captured before but didn't know what to do with them and now we can just enhance them just enough so that we're proud to show them so yeah very good point point. and also the advances in our software has also helped us create something that we couldn't do before absolutely absolutely Okay, I'm going to show you one more before and after. This is um, a before image. This was taken in Africa. And um, you've got these just wonderful opportunities to photograph in Africa. Um, this is a color image, but I decided to go ahead and take this into black and white. So let me go ahead and show you the after. Um, I love silver effects, and I'm able to get this kind of sketch drawing look, a uh, little trick that I've come up with. But there's so much that you can do. So with the Nick collection, you can get as artistic as you want, fine art, or you can just enhance it just a bit and not lose the integrity of the original image. So that's what I love about it. It gives you a whole range of freedom to do whatever you want. That's one area that I haven't explored my, too much. The Silver Effects Pro, I know a lot of people use it. I don't do a lot of black and white processing, so I still have yet to really dive into that one, but I know a lot of people really, really love that I love it for black and white. It's yeah. it's phenomenal. It is. I I truly believe with wholeheartedness that this is the best tool out there for converting to black and white. Mm -hmm. um, I was never a black and white photographer and didn't really like to convert my colors into black and white because that's how we see. A lot of us see in color. And so um, it, being able to convert it, though, really makes it more of a fine art piece. And I've discovered ways to manipulate it so that it's you know it makes it my own. And so I really enjoy doing that. I agree with you, and, and I find that even if I'm not trying to um, have a, you know, if I want it to look realistic, even in that case, Silver Effects Pro is the best black and white conversion tool because it gives me the freedom to take every tone in the original image and get it looking just the way I want it. It's fantastic, and not just the black to use, not yep. at all. Yep. Um, yeah, being able to manipulate the the highlights and midtones and the shadows is just fantastic. So that's they. I didn't realize that they could do anything better than Silver FX Pro One. I was blown away by that. But uh, our engineers are just brilliant. They came up with some new tools in Silver FX Pro Two, so that's really great. Well, something I do want to show you. Um, in fact, let me just. I'm going to go to this image here um, because I'd really like to show you what control points do. A lot of people uh, don't realize that. Really, I believe this is the magic of Nick software, being able to take a certain area and maybe change the tonality or change the brightness or contrast or add a filter effect, in fact, to a certain uh, part of your image without masking is just possible with the U-Point technology within our programs. So I'm just showing you this here so that when I show you how I manipulate an image using control points, you understand uh, what's happening. So here's an example. You see that little dot that's placed on this woman's face? Um, that would be a control point. And in previous uh, selections, you'd get just maybe uh, blue, green, and red channels that you could go through and, and manipulate. But here, when you place a point, let's say, on the skin, it's actually looking for all these different things, the location, image detail, saturation, hue, luminosity, blue, green, and red. So wherever you place this control point, it's going to mask out those certain areas. So I'm going to show you how this works, but I want you to see how powerful these control points are and what they're looking for. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pull in, let me pull in some images here. And hold on here, just one moment. So while yep. you're doing that, I just want to say, you know, um, my understanding about the Nick Google software is that there are different applications that do different things, like Silver Effects Pro is primarily for black and white conversions and toning. Whereas Color Effects Pro gives a kind of filtered color effects, or HDR Effects Pro is for uh, making images look HDR-ish, but they all have these similar controls. 
Is that correct? Lloyd? They they do have um, control points. They do have some similar controls, but some are quite different. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you a couple of filter effects, uh, particularly in Color Effects Pro 4. But right after this, I'll go to our website and I'll show you the different programs and what they do. Um, but the really wonderful thing is when we got to Google, um, they put everything together into one package. So when you buy the Nick collection, it's everything from noise reduction all the way to sharpening. So you get the whole suite of products. And they work really well together. And they really reduced the price from what it was before. Oh, amazing. Really yeah, it was horrible. around 600 Now it's 150 So it's um, pretty dramatic. So it's a nice gift from Google, I think. <laughs> it's a good thing. So I'm going to show you actually what um, we can do in Color Effects Pro with a simple pro contrast filter, for instance. Um, this was actually taken at a workshop uh, that I was involved in in Florida a couple years ago. And um, the sun is setting. Uh, actually, uh, actually, it was a sunrise instead of a sunset. I was, it's a really weird feeling because I'm on the west coast. And then we'd go to Florida. It's completely opposite. <laughs> so. I'm going to show you this one. It's a woman on her horse. This is before, and then let's just take a look at after. Uh, you can see the colors are out, much more saturated, the nice clouds. We can even add image borders to our image. So I'm going to show you real quickly how this is done. And you can see, as well, I'm working in Photoshop right now, just because I can show you the selective tool, this little palette that I can show up on my screen, and I can show you some befores and afters. But all of our programs work in Lightroom, Photoshop, Stop and aperture. So um, I have a we're going to. Can I ask you a yes. question right over the bat? So yeah. these, I'm assuming that these then are plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Is that correct? That is correct. It's not a standalone program. It actually works as a plugin within Photoshop, Lightroom, and Aperture. So you can actually see under the filter list, if you go down to um, Nick Collection, you can see all of the products are there as well. So it actually works on top of uh, Photoshop, and I'll show you that right now. I'm going to go ahead and just go right into Color Effects Pro 4. Now I'm going to tell you, I usually do these um, webinars or hangouts on one program for a full hour and with Color Effects I could probably do two easily. So I'm just going to show you a few little things here. But um, one of the things, Jan, you were asking, let me just show you. See how this is um, on top of Photoshop? It's actually a separate plugin that works on top of Photoshop. So once you pull this open, you just open it up, you're going to see all 55 filters on the left-hand side of the screen. And we've got some great, really short video tutorials of each and every one of these filters. So if you're interested in something like Dark Contrast or Glamour Glow, you can jump right to that particular video, and I'll show you where those are. And then over on the right-hand side, these are our adjustments, where each of these different filter effects, for instance, if I click on Brilliance and Warmth, I'm going to get some sliders on the right hand side of the screen and you'll see the very first one is saturation. The bar actually goes from a gray to uh, vivid color so it tells you that when you move this slider to the right, when you move it all the way, we're going to just blow this thing out. Okay, it's really saturated. But you can also move it all the way to the left, I'll just let it catch up, and you can actually do black and white within Color Effects Pro in some of these different filters. And double clicking should bounce it back to zero. Let me know if I'm going too fast, too. I want to make sure that this catches up. No, it's okay. good. Good. So we've got warmth and also perception, per, um, perceptual saturation. But if we go to some of these other filters, um, for instance, contrast color range, you can see there are some different sliders available there. I'm going to jump to cross-processing because some of these filters also have drop-down menus. And what I love about the software, too, is instant gratification. I'm all about seeing instant gratification right away. You know, we, we had our film days when we had to send in film, wait for it to be developed, and you're waiting a week to get it back. And now it's instantaneous. You can actually see a live update as you scroll through some of these options, for instance, and you can see right away the effects that you can get. And you can pick any of these, change the strength, maybe just for the shadows and highlights. But all these different filters have a lot of different variations. And, you know, we like to say there's 55 filters, but I say there's an infinite amount of possibilities because check this out. First of all, as you roll over these different filters, you'll see a little stack of icons here. These are visual presets, and if I click on that, you'll see some different variations for each of these different filters that you can manipulate. But also, if we click on Vintage, Film Effects Vintage, for instance, over on the right-hand side, Look at this. This is the drop-down menu here. And now we've got 28 more selections that we can go through. 
So there's just a lot of different possibilities. You just have to kind of seek and go through some of these different menus, but make sure you click on those drop-down menus because you'll get a lot more possibilities for yourself. And then, of course, we can manipulate anything we want here. So the one I wanted to show you was Pro Contrast. We're going to go over here on the left-hand side of the screen. These are all alphabetical. I'll go ahead and click on Pro Contrast. And then as I move my cursor over to the right, you'll see that we have uh, three different variations. We can correct for color casts, but the ones I want to focus on are correct contrast. Now standard Pro Contrast, if you click and drag this to the right, it will add contrast. It's pretty dramatic though. You can see in the shadows it get really dark. You see that? Or I can really flatten it back out again. But this is a new algorithm that we placed here called Dynamic Contrast. And what that does is it looks for the dark areas, but it's softer. It's not quite as dramatic, not quite as harsh. You can see, I don't know if you can see on your monitor, but on Love mine, I can still it. see it. A you know little I, bit of, yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> a little tip. That is so much better because what I've been doing, yep. it's like I can only take it so far in Lightroom because else you're really getting way too dark. And this is fantastic. Isn't it, though? And I'll just show you this is before yeah, I was just gonna say and after. So it's more like a selective control. But I love we're, dynamic we're contrast. Not, we're not quite hearing you, Ron. Um, yeah, I don't know why not. That's OK. Yep. Go ahead. Now, what were you going to say, Ron? I'm interested. Can you hear now? Yeah. No. no, I was just going to say the the one thing I noticed when you were showing that, when you slid the slider, I was looking at the sun specifically because I know when you deal with a contrast slider, one of the biggest problems is the, the, the brightest area blows out. Like if you do the original contrast slider you showed us. Yep. That Okay, like this one. I'll go ahead and pull like the that contrast. One, watch the sun. Exactly. See, it blows it right out. Not mm -hmm. useful at all. But the new one you've put in really holds that highlight Yep. But still oh. give the contrast. That's great. Excellent. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I love it when I can show something that people can use. And I, I tell you, people often ask me, what is my favorite filter out of Color Effects Pro 4? And I tell them, they're like my children. I can't pick out just one. <laughs> they all have their purpose, and I love them all. But it really, the, the key to this is just experiment and see what works for you. But don't forget those sliders, and you're not going to ruin anything. You, In Photoshop, you can keep your original layer. In Lightroom, you can edit a copy. So you can always keep your original. And uh, just really, I used to just play around um, and just start getting that look that you like. We also have these in different categories. So if you're a, let's say, macro photographer, you can click on this category here. And here's some different filters that we might recommend for macro but um, click on all because then you'll see all the different filters there. The other one that I really like as well is the graduated neutral density filter. You know those filters we put on our front of our lenses? Mm -hmm. Well, now you can do that in the digital darkroom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this upper tonality and actually pull it down because we want that s sky to be a little bit darker. Uh, lower tonality, you can lighten it up or darken it. So I'm going to make it pretty dramatic because let me show you here. I can blend the two together to make it a little bit softer. Again, pretty dramatic. And also the vertical shift. So just like that graduated neutral density filter that's in front of your lens, you can go ahead and play around with this and get the look that you like. And you can even change the rotation. Mm -hmm. See that? So that's, that's really good. Isn't that cool? Yeah, because good. neutral density filters are expensive to buy for they, your camera. Yeah, and if you break one, <laughs> yeah, not so much fun. Okay. Lori, could I ask you another yes. thing? You mentioned Lightroom, and that you could work, you could use, a, edit a copy. So in, I'm assuming then to get to the filters from Lightroom, you go to the Photo Edit In menu. Is that right? That is correct. Right, and then you'll see the net collection there, and then you can pick the particular plugin that you want to use. Absolutely. Terrific. So do you see any particular advantage or disadvantage going just straight to Nick from Lightroom, or go into Photoshop, then to Nick, and then back into Lightroom? You know, um, from my workflow personally is I use um, Lightroom for my digital asset management. So when I download all my images, I make sure I catalog them and put them, you know, tags and all that good stuff. But I usually, I just edit them in Adobe Photoshop, mainly because yeah, I used to work for Adobe years ago and I'm used to Photoshop, so I feel comfortable with it. But also there are some benefits with our programs, if you want to use the brush feature, there's a brush feature here that's available with Photoshop. Remember the flamingos that I showed you with that light coming through the middle? That's yeah. something that I manipulated using a brush feature where I erased actually 
um, some of that filter. So that also using smart filters is an advantage. So there's a few advantages using uh, Photoshop, but for the most part, and I'm going to show you how to use control points, you can do almost anything in Lightroom and Aperture as well. So it's just, you know, what, what you feel comfortable with. So, okay, I'm going to close out of this one. We're going to start with another image because what I want to do is make sure that I show you, let's see here. I'm going to go to this one here. Actually, let me just open it up from Photoshop. I think I'm ready to go here. Okay, let's play around with these guys. Um, some little jackal pups from Africa. Love these guys. We were in a Jeep, came around the corner, and there were seven pups. All of them ran down that little hole on the left-hand side, but these two stayed out. And these are the moments I live for, is when you get that lovely eye contact without doing anything. You're just sitting there quietly with your camera, and they're just as curious about you. And here they kind of snuggle up, and they just stayed out there for a while, and we got some great shots, but um, that was one of my highlights. So let me go ahead and show you here. This is uh, with Tonal Contrast. That's another filter within ColorFX Pro 4. And that brings out some of the contrast a little bit more dramatically than we saw with the Dynamic Contrast. Um, but it does a really nice job. But in this case, what I'm going to do is show you another program called Vivesa. And you were asking earlier, what are some of the differences? So we saw in ColorFX you had those 55 filters on the left-hand side of the screen, and you had all these adjustments on the right-hand side. You're going to notice a difference now with Vivesa. It's really quite different. You'll see on the right-hand side, we've got control points, which all of our programs have, but then we've got some adjustments that we can work with. So this is the program that I'll use after. If I have any noise, I'll get rid of it and define. And I know, Erica, I think you said that you would use define, and it really helped you with your photos for landscape. It was amazing. It was great. great. I always have a lot of noise in the bottom shadows, so this was great. Fantastic. Yeah, we had my 50D, anything, you know, 800 ISO or above, just all the noise. And I just love the way Define would could auto-sample auto areas to figure out what it should uh, denoise without taking away a lot of the sharpness. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, excellent. Well, this will be the second program that I would use, and that's Vivesa. And the reason why is because I can pinpoint certain areas that I might want to take down the brightness a little bit or add some um, structure. There's a couple filters here that I really like. They're new in Vivesa 2, and that's the Structure Slider and Shadow Adjustments. So let me just show you um, how I use control points in this instance here. So we're going to go ahead and click on Add Control Point. You see the little button there? And as I move my cursor onto the screen, hopefully you can see that becomes a little dot. That's my control point. Remember that slide I showed earlier? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put it on his little face. I'm just going to drop a control point there. And when you drop it on an area, what happens is you'll see that all these different options are available to you. Brightness, contrast, saturation, all the ones that are showing here on the right-hand side of your screen. So the very first thing I start with is this, what I call the area of influence. It's basically an area. People think it's a circle, but it's not, <laughs> um, believe it or not. It's actually choosing all those different um, highlights, brightness, tonality, the location, all those different pixels that match within that area. And so what I'm going to do here is let's just take down the brightness a little bit for a moment. I'm going to take this down. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is let me show you by using a mask here. Now this is going to be a tricky one because see how we have browns around here, similar tonality. So let's go ahead and click over here. And you can see as I drag this control point around, white reveals, black conceals. I'm sure, Jan, you've used that before. Yeah. But the white areas are being, um, that particular brightness is being toned down a little bit. So it's looking for similar pixel information. And as I click and drag out this area of influence, it's going to look for similar tonalities, et cetera, throughout the entire image. So you can bring it down pretty close. Let's say we just want to kind of tone down around this area here. We can do so. Here, I'm just going to zoom in for a moment. Maybe it's just his eyes. I use Vivesa a lot for the eyes. Um, by bringing out, and you can see that, uh, bringing out maybe some structure, which is some high contrast. So I just want to show you, this is how the control points work, and they're really powerful. So let's go ahead and go back to the RGB here. Um, I'm going to take this down, and you can see as I'm moving it, I'll try and move it a little bit slower for you. That's a little bit darker, that area there. 
Do you see how that's darkening up? Can you see that? I'll take that down. Maybe I no, should take a more dramatic image. <laughs> but um, I often use Vivesa just to tone it down. And I can also create my own vignettes, which is kind of fun. So in the corner, I'll maybe take the brightness down here. See how that's, and then I can duplicate that control point by holding down the option, alt or option key on my keyboard. And just kind of drag it around. So now I've got my own custom vignette if I wanted to do that. So this is a great, great program just to go in, take down some of those highlights, maybe add a little structure, a little bit of contrast in specific areas. And I'll show you before and after. So this is the before image. And we just toned it down just a little bit. Nothing major. I wanted to show you something that, you know, I wouldn't want to over enhance this too much. I want to keep it natural looking. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. Lori, when you talk about structure, are you talking about something like midtone contrast? Maybe like clarity might be in camera yes. or in light Yep. In fact, um, let me pull up another image to see if I can demonstrate that for you. Um, let's do this guy here. I, another I think line. It does clarity better than clarity. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's it's really very cool. Okay, I'm gonna Great go ahead. Photo. Yeah, this is a thank you. Uh, this was in Africa again. Um, we were watching. She just went after some wildebeest, but she was on her own and kind of half-heartedly chased them, and they ran away from her and kind of looked back like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so got her, you know, with the yawn. But I wanted to really emphasize this again with that midnight filter, um, kind of leading the the light more uh, this way in this direction. So I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to zoom in a bit when I get into Vivesa because I want to show you how this structure slider works. Okay, so we're pretty close there. I'm going to add a control point to her fur, and then by clicking and dragging out this particular slider for structure, do you see that? Do you see what happened? Oh, yeah. Before and after, this is before. Take a look at her fur. I'm going to click on it once more, and you should see a definite difference as far as um, the fur is concerned. And I'm going to split this. Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to show you before and after. On the um, left is before and on the right is after. And you can see the hair, the fur, just more, much more distinct. So often I'll use structure to bring out leaves and trees, the fur and a, you know, a lion's mane, or lace on a dress. It just works really well. And that would be the structure slider. OK. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to show, well, let's see. I'm going to cancel out of this for a moment. And let's go into this color effects real quick because I do want to show you, I just want to give you kind of something to maybe try on your own sometime. Uh, I've been talking a lot about that midnight filter, and I think I'd like to show you how I went about and did it. So I can show you real quick in Photoshop. So this is, we want Monday morning, all in alphabetical order here. Now, when you look at this particular filter, you're probably thinking, oh, I don't know about that. Is it going to work? Not, not so sure. That's actually Monday morning. I want midnight. Sorry. It's too dark. Um, but remember, you can remove things from this particular effect and make your subject really stand out. So in this case, I'm going to leave everything as is, but I'm going to click on the brush fe feature, this little button here. And underneath the selective tool, you'll see that we've got paint, erase, fill, and clear. So I can fill the entire image, I can erase it, or if I want to, I can go ahead and paint it in. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'll click on Erase, and let's see, I'm going to use one of the gra uh, graduated um, brushes here, and just by clicking and dragging, do you see that? Kind of directing the light. And if I like that, I can go ahead and maybe just choose a brush feature, for instance. Click on a brush, and I can just remove it from where I don't want that particular filter to be. And we can take down the opacity a little bit. OK. And just oh, by doing I see what you're doing. You've basically made a copy of the image, applied your filter, and now you're using a layer mask to hide the filter effect from part of the image, right? Yes, but d doing it really easily through the Color Effects Pro program because it allows me to not even worry about masking. I just tell it to paint, erase, fill, or clear. Do you see? And, but it is creating a mask, and that's before and that's after. So, yeah. So that's just a little trick, uh, kind of fun thing to do, to play with. So, 
I knew, Jan, that you might appreciate that one. <laughs> I really like that because, you know, it's very difficult to teach people about masks. There's something not intuitive mm -hmm. about the concept. And this way, who cares about the concept? You just click exactly. on brush and brush it away or brush it in. Great. Exactly. And our whole premise really was we want you to be out there photographing, taking the picture, and not spend so much time in the digital dark room. And we want to make it fun. Uh, to me, I actually enjoy shooting as much as I do doing the post-processing thing because it lets me revisit you know, my trip to Africa, for instance, and I can really enhance it to how I want it to look, and it's fun. And if you're not having fun in the shooting process, you know, going out there and taking that picture, or in the digital darkroom, it shows. So, you know, get yourself in that good space, put on some music, and just relax and just enjoy it, because it really is a nice time just to relax, and I like it better than reading a book <laughs> or watching a movie. So... Yeah, most days I do too, but there are some days. Some days is not always so fun. Not always. <laughs> but, yeah, it depends. But most of the time I do prefer it over television for sure. I can't remember the last time I turned regular television on. Oh, well, very good, Ron. That, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. Okay, let me show you this one here. Um, oops. One thing I need to do is I need to either apply or discard. So it's just reminding me, do you want to keep that? So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And let's see here. By the so way, Lori, do you have to save as you go like you normally would to keep all this? You know, um, you can if you want to. Um, right now, um, it looks like I might have an issue. Oh, there it goes. So let me go ahead and go back in there. Um, I sometimes do go ahead and save it uh, along the way just in case something like this happens. This is actually a test machine, so as you can imagine, we have some beta stuff on here. <laughs> um, so I apologize for that. But um, yeah, it's probably a good thing to save along the way. Okay, let me go ahead and open up another image here. We're going to take a look at this one. Let's see if we can open up this one again. Okay, so this is a cattle egret. Um, there are quite a few of them. When I lived in San Diego, every fall we'd get a ton of these guys, actually in spring, and their beautiful plumage would come out. You can see this guy. He's actually taking off on a leaf. Um, and so I'm going to apply a kind of a fun filter. Yep, I know about that. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into Color Effects Pro, and I'll show you one that's a one-click kind of thing. It's really easy to do. So let's suppose uh, you've got this particular image, and you want to change it from, let me just go ahead and turn this off so you can see it, from spring to fall. And we can easily do that by choosing Indian Summer. Now this is a little bit dark, but you can go through and choose anything that you want here and take down the foliage effect. So with this particular foliage effect, what it's doing, it's looking for all the greens and it's turning it orange. So you can actually enhance it to make it look like fall. So here's our before and after. I'll go ahead and show you that. It almost feels like cheating. But Isn't it, it though? It kind of is. <laughs> but you know, I got caught once. I was doing a demonstration to a group and I was showing before and after on some beautiful trees and somebody goes, um, excuse me, that's a uh, evergreen. <laughs> <So> <laughs> you kind of have to be careful what you show. Yeah. Okay. It's a very unhealthy evergreen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's dying. <laughs> so anyway, that, that's just a fun one. And then I want to show you as my last image here to show you today is going to be converting to Silver FX Pro. Okay. Again, love this program. And Ron, you got to get into black sure. and white. I think you'd really enjoy it. Uh, it's just, I'm sure I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would. <laughs> I can just fit it into the 26th hour of my day. Oh, just make time, <laughs> right? Priorities. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you before and after. This is before, and that's after, and it's pretty easy to do. One of the problems that you'll see with the giraffes uh, in particular is see how the neck gets cut off? You've got this line here. And there's no real way when you're sitting in a Jeep to get down really low or up really high uh, to get past that. So one of the things I like doing to kind of fix that is to go into Silver Effects Pro, convert it to black and white, and now you've got these blacks that really stand out. And you're not so, um, I don't know, the background kind of gets pushed back just a bit. So let's go ahead and go into Silver Effects Pro. Love this program. It's awesome. So we're going to go ahead and pull this up. Now, Silver FX Pro does come with presets, just like you saw basically um, in Color FX had some visual presets. So you can go through here and choose different looks. So here's a high structure, and what that's going to do, go ahead and pull this up here. It's going to, and you can see my dust spots, 
<laughs> it's going to pull up some of those darks, for instance, and then we can scroll down here. I'm going to get to the bottom because there's some more artistic ones just to show you. And sometimes I'll just start out with a preset to just give me an idea of where to start. So here's one. This is called Yellowed, for instance, or maybe Antique. But I'm going to go up to the top. Now one of my tricks here, particularly in getting that kind of a pencil look, the drawings, is I'll start with a high key, something that's really light, and then I'll take a control point and I'll place it on a dark spot on this giraffe, for instance, and take down the brightness. Okay, and pull that up just a little bit. Now we've got amplified whites, which should amplify or bring up the whites a little bit, and then amplified blacks will darken those as well. So well, we you go know, anybody, anybody who's ever struggled with making a selection in Photoshop has got to be cheering right now. Yeah, it's um, pretty darn awesome. You can see that right there. Um, that's my mask that it's creating. So it's, it's pretty incredible what this can do. And I use control points quite a bit. Um, it's just an easy way to make those selections. Now I'm going to duplicate this control point, place it down here. We're going to go ahead and take down that area of influence just a little bit. And we'll bring down the brightness. We're just going to take that down just a bit. So you can see now the giraffe is actually coming forward, isn't it? Away from that background. Yeah, so much so. more than it was. Yeah. Uh, I think how much first, dimension uh, you can add. Oh, sorry to interrupt you, Ron. That's all right. I guess I'm a little quiet today. The, I was going to say my first experience with um, U-Point technology was actually with Nikon Capture NX2, right? Um, which I bought first, and I absolutely fell in love with that technology. It, it, it just changed the way I processed altogether. And in fact, I avoided Lightroom altogether until Lightroom 3. I finally hopped on board in Lightroom 3 because I loved the control points so much and didn't realize I could get them through the Nix software. <laughs> uh. That's great. Yeah, we did actually develop that U-Point technology in Capture NX. That was where it first originated. Um, and then it was so popular, we decided to just go ahead and put it in all of our programs. And so glad that we did. Uh, I want to show you one thing as you were talking there. I was just kind of dropping some control points in here. One of the things you can do is you can take a control point. Let's say I want to lighten up those white areas. I'm just going to place a control point there. I don't know if you saw it, but it did take away yeah. oh, yeah. some of the darkness and just automatically brightened it. Uh, we we can call these anchor points. Um, sometimes I'll put these on a parts of an image that I don't want to change first before I start adding control points. So there's just a lot of little ways you can do this. But, so what uh, happens if control points overlap? Well, they actually uh, become more intelligent, uh, <laughs> believe it or not. So when you get two that are overlapping like this, so we've got this one here and this one here. So the very first one, remember I darkened it? This one here, I lightened it, but it's not really affecting the dark areas because of where I place this particular control point. See that? So is so it there. giving precedence to where the points are, not the order in which they're applied? Right, right. It's where it's placed. So if I place this on the, do you see I just moved on to the dark areas? Uh -huh. Now they all became lighter. So there we go. We'll just place that back there. Brilliant. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Um, I think uh, one thing I can show you too, let me just show you how this works by going back into the control points for a moment. I'm going to click on this one here and let's just show the mask. Okay, you can see, look at that beautiful definition. That's where I place it on the white area. So these control points do the most beautiful feathering and masking. Uh, I couldn't do it better myself. <laughs> Now, remember I was talking about those anchor points. Uh, maybe I want to get rid of some of this overspray. That's what I call it, overspray, from this particular control point. I'll just grab a control point and just drop it there. Do you see how that just got rid of it? Wow. It just got rid of all that extra overspray. So that's what I was doing when Ron was um, talking there for a moment. Um, I just went ahead and I was dropping in some control points. I'm sorry, I'm clicking too many times. Had someone a uh, question in the chat room mm -hmm. wanting to clarify exactly what amplify whites and amplify blacks Sure, are. yeah, that's a really good question. So let me go ahead and let me just put here, I'll just place a control point down over in this area here for a moment. So what amplify whites does is it's going to look for some of the whites in this area. Well, maybe that's not the best. Here, let me just put it on him. I'll put it on the back of the draft. So it's going to bump up the whites. And then Amplify Blacks is going to do just opposite. It's going to bump up the blacks. So it's almost like adding a little bit of contrast to it, 
but you're is, just is it kind of like working with the highlights and shadows sliders uh, yeah a little bit now the highlights and shadow sliders are going to uh, retain the details in your shadows and the other one would be retaining the details in your highlights this is more like darkening or lightening certain you know the darks and the lights Okay. So just think of it as increasing your darks or increasing your whites. I think would probably be the best way to describe that. Okay. All right. Now that we've got those down there, we also have finishing adjustments. This is the last part of it. And we can go in and actually select different uh, toning. All these different, if you like the sepia look, we can go to sepia. Or maybe a little blue toner, we can add a blue toner to this. But the nice thing about this is you can go in underneath here and go in and change the strength of that particular toning or the silver hue, balance, paper toning. You can have the white show through a little bit better. So there's a lot of power in each of these different sections here. Just go ahead and open those back up again and play around with those as well. And I'm going to add image borders. So this is our first program that we actually added borders to. So I was really happy about that. I tend to like borders. And I'm going to choose a number 12, for instance. So with this particular border, I can go through and choose Vary Border. And as I click through it, you'll see that it keeps the same look, but kind of changes it up a bit. So if you have a gallery, or maybe you have a photo book that you're putting together with the same type of border, you can change it up so it's not exactly the same, which is really nice. So that is a quick overview of Silver SilverFX Pro. Did you guys have any questions while I'm in here? I do, which is, okay. when you're done, um, let's say you started with a raw file. Okay. What do you end up with, and how do you, do you save it? What, what happens now? Okay, so when you um, open up a raw file, it'll, for instance, open up into uh, Adobe Camera Raw. And once you do any manipulations there, then it'll open it up as a TIFF within SilverFX Pro. So from here, I would just go ahead and press OK if I'm done. And here's an example in Photoshop where we have two different layers. So this is before, and that's after. From here, you can save it out as a Photoshop file, TIFF, JPEG, whatever your host application allows you to save it out as. But I tend to like to save it out as a Photoshop layered file so I can go back in and take a look. And especially if you use smart filters, you can go back in and change those control points. So you can actually go back and continue from where you left off, which is a really nice feature. So the, the way you did it just now, you wouldn't be able to go in and make the changes? Is that no, correct? no. Okay. I'd have to go into uh, using the smart filters. And then once you do that, then you can make the changes. So you want to convert for smart filters first. That's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah. So let's say now you started in Lightroom instead and you use edit in or photo edit in and choose edit a copy. Could you go back and access your, uh, your Color Effects or Silver Effects Pro? filters again? Um, it would be, well, once you're done with it, it's pretty much like this. Uh, it'll collapse it, right? So you'll have a flattened image like this, but you couldn't go back into Silver SilverFX Pro where you left off. If that, am I answering your question? Yes, it, totally. Yeah, totally. yeah. So the only way you really could go back and manipulate those control points would be if it was a smart filter to start with. So another argument for kind of working in Photoshop or using the the Nick Google um, plugins for Photoshop as opposed to going directly from Lightroom. Yes, that, that would be one of the benefits is using the smart filters and using that brush filter, for instance, or the brush tool. Yeah. Uh, let, let's say you, you know you want to do something in color effects, but, uh, but you also know you want to do tune something with Viveza. Is there any advantage of going one of them first, the other one second, or does it just depend on the situation? You know, um, Dave, that's a good question. It, sometimes it does depend on the situation. Um, our workflow, in fact, let me go ahead and pull up our website stuff here. Um, oh, I'm seeing you, sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, actually, this is our Google Plus um, page, uh, Nick Photography, and this is where Dan and I post every single day. Uh, you can see there's some live training happening with Silver Effects Pro tomorrow. Um, we've got videos. We have uh, pics of the day. We have a new cover photo. So if you're on Google+, Plus, I'd really recommend going to Plus Nick Photography, and um, we'll post some really interesting 
good tidbits for you here. So that's where we are at every single day. Yeah, um, the other thing you might um, be able to talk a little bit about that that event tomorrow. Okay. Just oh yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. So what's happening here is um, tomorrow's event. Um, Dan is actually going to be at uh, Photo Plus Expo in New York, so Nava is going to be showing SilverFX Pro 2. So these are things that we periodically have every single week, uh, hangouts on air, where you can learn more about the software. It's live, and of course we'll post it later. So um, that's just one of many. Well, another thing you can do here is you can go to our YouTube channels. Um, there's some YouTube videos here, but where you really want to do is go here. Videos shared publicly. So let's take a look at Nick Photography on YouTube. We have got hundreds of videos between Dan, myself, and a few other people. Uh, everything from the introduction to Nick Collection, you can see there's quite a few of them here. Advanced training, where we go into particular genres of photography that you might be interested in. And inspirational educational videos from guests. We have different playlists set up. So there's a lot of information here uh, that you can go ahead and see. And one of the things I wanted to show you is there's a, a series called 55 Filters in 52 Weeks. And we actually go through and start from the by color user defined filter all the way to the very end, which I think is white neutralizer. And these are quick little you know, three-minute videos, but they go through and actually show you what each of the different sliders do. So that's a really a nice one there to, to visit. Okay, so what I was going to do here, I was going to go to Nick, uh, nicksoftware.com because I want to show you our website here. Can people, you know the, uh, the hangouts that you said, the weekly hangouts, are those yes. open so that people could join and actually be like at the bottom of the hangout or just watch them? Um, this one is uh, to be watched, but they can ask questions. So they can type in their questions, and then Dan or whoever is giving that particular uh, talk will be able to answer right away. I think at some point we might add some panelists, and especially when we get some guests in, we'll probably do how um, Ron and Jan, how you set them up. But for now, it's uh, basically showing you how to use it. Um, yeah, one on one. Uh, so this is our, you can just type in www.google.com. I was used to typing in Nick Software, but either way, it will get you here. But these are our different programs. So if you wanted to learn more about ColorFX Pro, um, see some tutorials, etc., you can uh, click on some of these. Oh, there's my little guy. Mm -hmm. um, SilverFX Pro, uh, Vivesa, HDR, which we didn't get a chance to go through. Sharpener Pro, which sharpens your images for output. And then Define, which sounds like everybody really loves here. So that's great. But uh, check out there the website as well. And we have a help center too. So there's lots of information. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact our customer service. They're a great group of people and very happy to help you out as well. And what okay. if you want to buy what if you want to buy the Google Nick collection? Uh, just click buy now and that'll take you there. And you can see it's one forty nine. And then you can go ahead and just type that in there and you'll get uh, all six products, which is a really great deal. So you just totally the great. Now button. I mean that that yes. is unbelievable. <laughs> it is, isn't it though? So let's see if I'm back. Am I back? You're back. Yes. yes, you're back. Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> Yay. So do you, so do you got any juicy goods for us on what's coming up? Do you got anything going on that you're allowed to talk about? And just give us a bone. What are you doing? Can you know? I just say that we are always working on something and I would highly recommend checking with us. Just check in regularly. Soon. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's that? I can't say anymore. But okay. yeah, there's always, we're so busy here between um, the new Google Plus edit feature, which is basically Snapseed now in Google Plus, which is awesome if you folks don't know about yeah. that. Yes, Open up an image, click on edit. Yeah, that's it's really great. Uh, but we're always working on new stuff. So Nick is alive and well, and we are really busy. <laughs> so that's what great. I can tell you, Ron. That's good news. Good to know. Yeah. You it know, is. I know. I th I have a feeling that a lot of Google Google Plusers um, became acquainted with Nick when Google bought it. But I just wanted to say, you know, Nick has been around for a long time, and professional photographers have absolutely, you know, loved it for many years. Um, I think, gosh, I first ran into it maybe 10, 11 years ago. Could that be possible? Yeah, it's about 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah, 12 mm -hmm. years, right? Yes. 
and you know it's these they were always considered like you know it's something I always wanted to buy all the programs but I could never have afforded them all yeah. back then and now to have the ability to own all of those programs I mean it sounds like an infomercial but I'm just telling you really what I think it's yeah. the most amazing deal ever and just even if you don't buy those to have Snapseed embedded in Google Plus in the you know it doesn't say Snapseed what does it say just edit under yeah, the just edit. Right? It's an editor within yeah the Google Plus. So it's it's fantastic. Yeah, that's fun too, it's and fantastic. it's free. D yeah. Are there control points in Snapseed as well? I think so. Huh? There is one in TuneImage, I believe. Yeah. yeah, and you can get that on your mobile devices as well. So that's a mm -hmm. fun little program. Yeah. Well, it's more than a fun little program. I think it's a very serious photography tool. Uh, the Snapseed. Tell everybody to get Snapseed. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and Erica, I love your images, by the way. I know Thank we've been you. chatting here. We've been emailing each other today, so it's nice to see you in person there, mm -hmm. kind of in person. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank well, you, Lori. That is so great. Now, do we have any questions coming in from outside, you guys who are monitoring that? Can we um, get on? One person asking about using HDRFX Pro in Photoshop Elements. Okay, that is the only program that we don't support within Photoshop Elements, and only because we have to convert it to 32-bit TIFF, and it's just okay. too much for that program to handle. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately. But that means that you can use Silver Effects Pro and Color Effects Pro. And oh yeah. In Elements. Yes, all the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you have to buy a special version? How does that work? Um, to work within Photoshop yeah. Elements, no. Nope, this one also does work in Photoshop Elements. So the same Nick collection. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, if there's any questions, post them there. I'll try to jump in sometime tonight or tomorrow and answer anything. And again, check out our website and the free tutorials. And thanks, Braun and Jan, for having me on. And so great to see you again, Dave and, and Erica. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank I'm you really so much for coming, together. Lori. Thank you. And everybody, remember, you can listen to this um, this episode again on YouTube, on the Photoshop Show page on YouTube. And there is really useful information, so I hope that you will do that. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye.